as a constitutional It's not my lead, obligation, and only, do not point yes, to Yes, you have a constitutional oath to uphold the Constitution, ma'am. You, you misunderstand the procedure. I will attempt Objection. to explain it to you. Objection. The documents that you want are not documents that are in the court's file at this point in time. Objection, I don't know if they would ever be in the court's file at this point in time. That's, your not, position that's is, not my problem, man. If you, absolutely, it's your problem. But it, no, that's your not my problem. Your position is that you want them from the prosecutor, and you have requested them from the prosecutor. That's right. And the prosecutor has failed to give them to you. That's right. You can make the appropriate application to the court, and you can say to the court, I've asked for them, I'm entitled to them, I haven't gotten them, order them to give it to me. I've already I have filed no a notarized affidavit of fact in reference to return of property weeks ago. A notarized affidavit. So if you're telling me you don't have to acknowledge, acknowledge affidavits, all right, that's what your statement is. However, bottom line is this court has failed to prove jurisdiction and has avoided the uh, issue of jurisdiction at all costs. And you don't, nobody in here has the status. All right? Nobody has proven status, and nobody in here has the authority to proceed. Now, the last hearing we discussed, you stated that you please this stop matter, me? this matter, you stated, ma'am, for the record, you stated that this matter was relative to jurisdiction, not Mr. Keesler's position here and not anything else. You stated that you were giving the prosecution a chance to prove jurisdiction. And he's not in the assigned prosecutors in the case, but obviously he's remaining solid and he has nothing to state. So I move that this case be dismissed. When there is an appropriate application before this court to address the issue of discovery violations, jurisdiction, or anything else, the court will act. Filing a notarized or not notarized affidavit is not an appropriate way to bring a matter before the attention of the court. What you must file is a notice of motion that sets forth the relief that you want and it needs to be supported with a certification, an affidavit, whatever it is. Can you repeat that, ma'am? Notice of motion. This is that, exactly that, what I told Cheyenne Matoda Kushamir L. Uh, for the record, man, which, uh, which rule, authority, courtroom rule, uh, statute are you using it's in the court to, rules. I do to not address recall, that matter? It is in the court rules. I do not recall, and I'm not going to look up for you, the exact court rule, but the court rules set out the procedure that you must follow. Objection, ma'am. I'm, I'm not a part of your society. I'm not subject to your courtroom rules, and you have not proven jurisdiction. And now, I will never address the issue of jurisdiction until and unless the appropriate application is made before the court, because filing either an affidavit that's notarized or an affidavit that's not notarized does not bring it before the attention of this court. Objection. There is no discretion to ignore the lack of jurisdiction. Chris versus United States. Jurisdiction is fundamental, and a judgment rendered by a court that does not have jurisdiction in here is void ab initio, and that is uh, application of Y300 P.132 versus caveat. Once jurisdiction is challenged, the court cannot proceed when it clearly appears the court lacks jurisdiction. The court has no authority to reach merits, but rather should dismiss the action. Malo versus United States 505 F2D. When jurisdiction is challenged, the party invoked jurisdiction has the burden of establishing Basel versus U.S. power like, like company. Courts enforcing their statutes do not act judicially, but merely ministerially. Thus, no judicial immunity and unlike courts of law do not obtain jurisdiction by service of process, nor even arrest and compel appearance. I'm here by way of threat, arrest, coercion. I'm going to make that clear for the record every time I have to appear, if I have to appear. The only reason I'm appearing here is by way of your threat, arrest, coercion, or your company's threat, arrest, coercion. You can read me. Let me interrupt you, please. You can okay. read me this until the cows come home. You can read it ad nauseum and ad infinitum. It doesn't change the fact that until the issue is brought appropriately before this court, no ruling with regard to jurisdiction is ever going to be made. Now, let me ask you this question, though. In the other matter, oh, first of all, let me, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, in, in the, uh, let me get the correct number out here because we now have two numbers. 
In the case with indictment number 08-04-0441, which is the one in which Cheyenne M. Cushamirel is also involved, I have severed those matters. So they will be on completely separate tracks. But uh, he told me that he had filed a notice of removal to the federal court. And my question to you is, have you filed a notice of removal to federal court with regard to any of these matters? Yes, ma'am. Notice of removal all has of been them? filed all of them? regarding all, all the matters. Three piece, the three matters? Yes, the three okay. matters that uh, you uh, Can I ask you, please, to tell me, when did you file this? It was filed last night, FedEx. To the federal FedEx, court? To the federal court. Right. Yes. Uh, well, as I am sure you are aware, if the court accepts them, then we will simply transfer them to the federal court. We won't deal with them anymore. Okay. Well, I'm still sure you're aware of the matter that you've not proven jurisdiction in either of the hearings and that you've avoided addressing the issue of jurisdiction. And I will continue to not address the issue of jurisdiction until the appropriate motion is filed with the court and the court has the ability to address it and make a determination with regard to it. And, and Judge, if I could just go a moment. That, that's the issue at hand. As currently stands, we are representing... Objection. <laughs> You're not representing stands, me. Judge. Therefore, it would be our responsibility to file that motion. Given the fact that he will not cooperate with our office, it's impossible for us to do that. But you really need to well, reach the issue. I do. I, I, I want to get back to what Mr. Uh, I, I do want to get back to what Amir KCL said. Now we addressed the issue to some extent with regard to the indictments. I have here for you, and the record will reflect that I am giving you a copy of the indictment that has 08-07-0727 and also. 08-04-0441. Objection. Uh, just for the record, the Office of Public Defense is not representing me. We don't have any power of attorney for me, and uh, I'm not part of your society, so you cannot represent me, and we do not share nationalities. Okay, now, for the record, Mr. Uh, I need the nationality of every agent in here, and I need the name and the information because I'm suing everybody. Mr. Kramer. Everybody. So I need everybody's name and your position, Excuse starting me. with you, Excuse sir. Me. Who was calling out from the audience? I was, ma'am. No, you were not. Um, Who was? No, do not hand anything over. Nothing. In the audience, please do not call out while court is in session, or the officer will ask you to leave. These are now completely discombobulated. They're not stable. Yeah. To, well, well, the one wasn't stable. Right now. The one was. No, I don't have. Con look, you can't even read this. Is that what I gave you? I think so. Yeah. This, I give you back the original. Do you have the copies? I gave them to her. Okay. I need. I need your name. Uh, your position. Sorry. I need your name. And position. Sorry. No one is going to give you any information. Ma'am, are you stating that you are not obligated to provide me with your identity and status? You know my name. Your employees or your co-workers are not obligated to provide me with their identity, status, and company position now? Ma'am? Yes? Did you not just hear me? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I was trying to get the paperwork together. Okay. okay. Can you wait a moment until I'm finished? No, I'm going to review myself. I'm, I'm, here, I'm here on time, ma'am. Hold on. Right. I'm trying to get all these papers together. Well, it's a simple question. I'm sure you can answer why you get your papers together. I, can't, I cannot get them together. I can't answer. This only has three. Okay. This has three counts, mm -hmm. and this you didn't yes, make a copy counts. of the last count. So make a copy of the last one oh, and bring it in, okay. and we'll staple them together. All right, Amir, Noble Amir KCL, you complained about discovery. I think I've addressed that. I'm giving you the copies of the indictments, and you said you've never been interviewed. I am sure that Mr. Kiesler can give you now a date for you to be interviewed. Objection, ma'am. I, I do not require the Office of Public Defense or any attorney at law. Well, you told me, you told me that you, you were complaining that you hadn't been interviewed. No, what I stated was 
if he was representation on this case, he has not provided assistance. If he was representation for this case, the assistance is ineffective. Well, my understanding is that that Judge Smith has required Mr. Kiesler to represent him. Objection. I've addressed this matter with Judge Smith. Judge Smith does not have jurisdiction and could not prove jurisdiction. Therefore, Judge Smith does not have the authority to make any decisions for me. And neither do you. And neither does Mr. Kiesler. And neither does the Office of Public Defense. For the record. Now, as I stated, you just told me that you denied him my question. My question was, I need the information for the people here who are attempting to force business on me. I want his name and position. I want her name and position. And I want his name and position. And I want your nationality. I am asking you not to point at me. And I am now going to ask you not to point at anyone else in the courtroom. It is very impolite. No problem, ma'am. Now, I'm asking you to answer my question. You know my name. That is all you need to know. I don't know your name, ma'am. Judge Laban. That is my name. Your nationality? You have no need to know my nationality. Yes, I do. You are attempting to force business upon me. I need to know your nationality. For the record. And your status. For the record. And anybody else that's working with you. Your questions are unintelligible to me. They're unintelligible? Do you not understand what nationality means, ma'am? Do I need to pull out the dictionary? Which dictionary are you comfortable with using, ma'am? For the record. All right. The record should reflect that I am going to give to Noble Amir Kusumir L. I'm sorry. Noble Amir KCL. A copy of indictment 08-07-0727 and indictment 08-04-0441. Objection, ma'am. Can you state for the record who those indictments are addressed to? State who you were giving them to. Objection. Wait. No. I am handing the papers. She needs to state for the record. I am handing the papers to Noble Amir KCL. I need to know who's on it, ma'am. It doesn't matter who's on it. Yes, it does. I'm giving you copies of papers. I need to know who's addressed to. Read it. If it's not addressed to me. Read it. You've not read my notarized affidavits. Read it. You've not read my notarized affidavits. Well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give this matter another date. Mr. Kiesler, you can make whatever application you want. Noble Amir KCL, you can make whatever application you want. Hopefully, in the meantime, we will hear from the federal court with regard to the removal application. I'm going to just state for the record that your application to do any further proceedings are denied because you have not proven jurisdiction, neither has the prosecution who was here and present. Prosecutor, would you state your proof of claim for the record? Your Honor, would any motion by our office be heard on the next date or would you set a separate hearing? No, it will be heard on the next date. Thank you. For the record, the application to proceed to set any hearings is denied. It's not proven jurisdiction. April 6th. Denied. Thank you, Your Honor. May I be excused, sir? This is the only notice that I will give Noble Amir KCL at the April 6th date. I don't know if anyone sends out, I don't know if Mr. Kiesler's office sends out letters reminding people, but I don't. I simply expect that you will be here on April 6th. Let me just say this. If you want this court to rule with regard to jurisdiction, it is very simple to bring the issue before me. All you need to do is file the appropriate application in notice of motion. Objection, ma'am. You can file all these other papers and it's just never going to happen, sir. Objection, ma'am. That's not my problem. That's your matter of holding the law, ma'am. That's not my problem. That's your problem, ma'am. Because whether you people understand or not, you've all fired yourselves. So there is no room to set another hearing because you failed to prove jurisdiction in every hearing that we've had. Judge Smith has failed to prove jurisdiction. You failed to prove jurisdiction. Prosecutor Luciano has failed to prove jurisdiction. You people fired yourselves. I'm letting you know that right now. You violated 